Let's do some advanced geoprocessing in QGIS. We'll use a number of geoprocessing operations, as well as some other operations within QGIS in order to measure the area of these polygons that is within a certain distance of the points. In this case, we're dealing with the state of Pennsylvania, and the counties are here. These are polygons, as you can tell. And then we have some points. These are oil and gas wells. And my, my question for these two layers is what percentage of the counties of the polygons of each one is within two miles of an oil or gas well. So we're going to buffer the oil and gas wells by two miles, find the overlap of that buffer with the counties, measure the area of that overlap for each county, bring that area over into the original counties layer, and then finally style the original counties based on what percentage was covered by that area. It sounds complicated. It's not really. There are just a lot of steps, and I'm going to break down those steps here in this video, so hopefully that will help you as you do similar things. Okay, so first. First we want to make sure that both of our layers are in the same projection because we're going to be doing some overlay operations. You can do this by going to General under the Layer Properties, and in this case we're using a state plane projection for the northern part of Pennsylvania. That should be fine. And we see that we're using the same one for the counties. So, um, so now every time we create a new layer, we just want to make sure that we don't change the projection. As long as we stay in the same projections, we should be fine here. So first, I want to create a buffer around the wells. To do that, I go to Vector, Geoprocessing Tools, Buffer. And I'll pick the wells layer. And the buffer distance, I want to be two miles. The projection, I know, is in feet. So that is 2 times 5,280. And I will dissolve the results, which means that um, I will get one large feature. That is the combination of all of the buffers. OK, and this will take a few minutes. OK, the buffer is done. You can tell it worked because you can see the ring around the wells layer. Perhaps you don't trust that this is actually a two mile buffer, though. If you were curious, there is a measure line tool. I'm going to change it to feet, and I'll click as close as I can to an original point, and as close as I can to the edge. And that does seem to be awfully close to to what we told it to do. Um, in this case, I'm sure I'm just off because, as you can see, I didn't get quite on the point, and I didn't quite get on the edge. But this is a good sanity check. Okay, so I don't need the wells layer anymore, so I'm just going to get rid of it, because that's going to be a distraction later. Okay, so now we have this big feature. We can ensure that it is one big feature by clicking on it. We see that the whole thing is selected if we click on it with the selection tool. 
So it's one large feature. What I want to do now is find the overlap of this large buffer with each county that it touches. To do that, I'm going to do an overlay operation using intersect. Intersect is just going to keep the parts that overlap in both layers, and it's going to be broken up by individual features in those layers. So you should have um, you should have at the end of this a buffer that uh, it's the buffer, but it is only the buffer for each county. So we'll see how that goes. Um, <clears throat> in this case, the order of these layers doesn't matter too much. I'm going to do it counties and then well buffer. And I'll just call it counties intersect wells. And this should be much closer, much quicker than buffering. And you can see, as I said, it got rid of these parts that are outside of the state. And, and you might be able to tell that the buffer has been cut up along the edges of, of counties. And I can use the select tool to confirm this. This also confirms that this area, this buffered area within each county, each one is its own feature, and it's one feature per county. This is convenient because we want to measure the area of that whole feature. Remember, this whole feature is just the land within each county that's within two miles of an oil or gas well. Okay, so how do I calculate area? First, I want to deselect de everything, and I'm going to go to the field calculator and create a new field, and I'll call it well area. I want to, it to be a decimal number because I want it to have some digits after the decimal point. And let's make it large just to be on the safe side. And Calculating area is under geometry. Area. So it's just dollar sign area. And this will calculate the area for each geometry. So you see we have these red outlines now. That's because we're in edit mode. I'll turn that off. And if I go to the attribute table now, I should have a new column called well area. And I do. And this only exists for counties that have some wells in them. So you can see that there are only 37 of these. If I open the attribute table for the counties, I have 67. So there are 30 of these counties with no intersect. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the well buffer because I don't need that anymore. And it helps if you can keep your layers relatively short the list of layers, rather, um, it's harder to mess up as you do this, so I recommend it. So now that we have that column with the area on the intersect layer, I want to bring it over to the counties layer, and I'm going to do that through a join. So I'm going to edit the properties for the counties, and go to joins, create a new one. I'm going to join with the intersect layer, and I want to pick a column that is common between the two, but that is a unique identifier. So I need some way of distinguishing the features so that I only get the area that is within that buffer for that county. I wouldn't want to pick something that, um, that might not be unique. For example, maybe the image name that might be the same for, for multiple counties. I want to make sure it's a unique identifier, so I'm going to use county name. So I'm going to pick county name for both. And 
I'm going to choose which fields are joined because I just want to bring over well area. So I'm going to check well area. And because I'm only bringing one field over, I'm going to get rid of this prefix. And hit OK and OK. And now if I go to the counties and open the attribute table, I have well area here. And you see that it's null some of the time. If I select some of the nulls, you see that those are all counties outside of the buffer. So it makes sense that they do not have any overlap with the well area. And if I sort this, I could pick one of the larger ones. Yeah, so that that county has a large area covered by wells, as is that one, and this one. Okay, so now I have the well area. I want to style based on the percentage of the each that is covered by those wells, because that is what we've been trying to do this whole time. So I'm going to style going to make a graduated style and <clears throat> I want to pick the well area but I want to divide it by the area of the county that will normalize it okay so when I style it this way in this case I'm I'm just using natural breaks and I classified it you see that a lot of the counties disappear. Some of the ones that disappear had no overlap. Some This one disappeared, but it does have plenty of overlap. Um, there seems to be an issue in QGIS where sometimes the, uh, the classification scheme seems to cut off some of the features. So in this case, by just bumping these, this value up to 1, that worked fine. But if I reclassify it, it will disappear again. I'm not fully sure what's going on there. Um, yeah, so, so it's not correctly calculating the upper bound of this, and that's why one of these are, is disappearing. <clears throat> but the rest are disappearing because they're null. And there are a couple of ways you could handle this, for sure. Um, <clears throat> one way might be to bring the counties in again and style that one way, that's your no data way, and layer that underneath these counties. So, so I could bring in this layer again and put it underneath here, and I could make it gray or something so that it is clear that it is uh, it's the no data and you might want to like make it fade out a little bit more make it a little bit transparent something like that um, to show that those are those are indeed counties of Pennsylvania but they're not part of this data set so that's one way you could do it I'm going to remove that actually and show you a, a slightly longer way of doing it that will work more consistently. So remember back in our style here, we're dividing well area by area. I'm going to instead add a new column using the field calculator. I'm going to call that per well, for short for percentage wells. And I'm going to use the same expression. So it's under fields and values, that's well area, divided by area. And I think I'm doing it on the wrong layer. Let's check. Oh, that column already exists because I was doing this earlier. So I'll, I'll call it per wells too. Sorry for the confusion there. Um, so if I go back to the attribute table now, I should have a per wells 2. That's the one I just created. And 
I can sort this and I can see, okay, the largest percentage one is Bradford indeed here. Um, so these, I have the same results here, but now it's normalized and it's normalized on the layer so I can use this again later. What I want to do before I go any further is take care of these nulls, these null percentages. I want to update those to, so that they're zero. So I can, one way I can do this is hold shift and click the first and then the last of the nulls and then go back to the field calculator and update the per wells 2 column and just make them all zero instead of null. So now you see that some are zero. Okay, so now when I style and if I reclassify, it looks pretty similar. Um, that's because I didn't change the column, so I need to change the column to per wells 2 and classify again. And now I get all the columns. Let's turn off editing mode so that we don't have the red edges anymore. And deselect. Okay. So now I have all the columns, um, all the counties rather, showing up using this graduated style. Um, one thing um, usually you want, in this case, it might make sense to break out the 0% from from the 8% bucket here. So what you can do is make the lower value very small for this bucket and hit apply. And you see that the nulls disappear. And then I can add a new class and style that however I want. So I can do this really funky style for that. <clears throat> and you can see um, that's probably not how I would do the finished product, but that gives you an idea of how you would style the 0% slightly differently than the rest of the map, but keep that, keep those zeros there also. Okay, so that, that was a, um, that was a quick look at a longer chain of geoprocessing functions. The, um, just as a reminder, we started with the counties and the wells in the same projection, and we buffered the wells here. And then we intersected that buffer here. So now you had these, the buffer was split into each county, and then we calculated the area on that layer over here, and then we brought the area over to the counties. And did some some other field calculator stuff to make it easier to style. But that's the process for doing this kind of thing. I hope it helps you with similar problems.